The dog life world started uh, long ago, not with the Cimarrons. Uh, it was the Belgian Shepherds from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, to say something about me, uh, my name is Jessica and I'm from Stockholm from the beginning, the mm -hmm. capital of Sweden, but now I live in South Sweden. Uh, so I've been living here for almost 10 years, I think mm -hmm. now because it's closer to Europe. Um, I uh, always loved dogs, but mm -hmm. I was not allowed a dog because my mother wouldn't want a pet at home. So mm -hmm. I got horses instead. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so horses was first. Then came the Belgian Shepherds when mm -hmm. I moved from home. And uh, from there I went to the Dogo Argentino okay. to start breeding uh, and um, the dog Argentino will always be in my heart, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a breed that has many problems because mm -hmm. it's a lot of uh, mixed breed in it, 11 breeds. Right. Uh, so I, I wanted to find something that was uh, better and mm -hmm. more towards the Belgian Shepherds. And I stumbled on a little article in a magazine about the mm -hmm. Cimarrons and was mm -hmm. like, wow, I'm getting that one. Okay. So I did that in, uh, I think it was 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, so they just been um, provisional recognized by FCI. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he was uh, my first male, Pancho was the first male to come to Europe. He's uh, soon uh, 12 years old now. Wow. A grumpy old man. So <laughs> that was got me into Cimarrons. So... If he would not have been the dog he has been, I would not have got another one. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Uh, they are a handful. Are they? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you say that they're a handful? Uh, if you don't activate them, mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you it's going to show in your house. Everywhere. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they're very yeah. active inside. They're active all the time. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, normally, they want to be in the center, mm -hmm. always with their owner, if the cat mm -hmm. is not beside me. Right. Uh, but uh, for the moment, uh, I would say you need to do some brain exercise with them, mm -hmm. not just walking them or obedience or stuff mm -hmm. like that. You really need mm -hmm. to exercise the brain uh, and they need to learn to relax. Right. How long have you been um, uh, in the show world? Oh, my God. That is a long time. Um, let me see now. I think it must be something over 20 years. With the Cimarrons, um, I've been uh, to, what do we say, Romania, uh, Italy, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Ukraine, uh, have I missed something? Yeah, Germany, Poland. Yeah, I've been around Europe. You've been around Europe, yeah. 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 And um, the awards that uh, I'm most proud of is uh, the world winner title. That is the biggest show in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, from the beginning, uh, a lot of the titles for mm -hmm. every, every year with my dogs. So I'm pretty happy with that for the Cimarrons. Right. Um, what's the history of the Cimarrons as you, as you know it? What was, you know, what are they, where did they originally come from? What breeds did, did they uh, originate from, etc.? The breeds uh, that are in the Cimarrons, they are actually unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not so, they have some studies on it, but they are not sure. What uh, you can say that you know, maybe, uh, because they uh, uh, started to produce themselves in the wild, is that uh, you have the farmer dogs, mm -hmm. and you have some type of uh, molosser dogs, and you have uh, 
like sight hound dogs mm -hmm. that are mixed in. Mm -hmm. So it was when uh, to Uruguay, the Spanish and uh, Portuguese conquerors came mm -hmm. and they had dogs with them and they also left the dogs. And then uh, the Cimarrons, uh, they started to produce themselves. So they mm -hmm. were actually wild from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's the short history. <laughs> right. In Europe, it was 2007. When, when you uh, came, yes, okay. Uh, when they went into Epsia, uh, okay. I know some uh, some Uruguayans that moved to Spain, uh, mm -hmm. maybe brought some with them, but they were not uh, in FCI, and then they don't uh, they count like a mixed breed if you are not in the uh, pure breed like FCI. Right. So right. it's a little difficult, but. Uh, from FCI, Pantry is the first one to be registered and okay. been competing with in the show world. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so what are some of the uh, 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 functions of a Cimarron? Uh, like, you know, obviously they're a working dog. Uh, you know, what are some of the jobs that they have today? Uh, today, they still do a lot of herding. Uh, mm -hmm. with the farmers uh, actually I live uh, neighbors with the 400 sheep so my oh. dogs they get to work a lot mm -hmm. uh, not all cimarrons are suited uh, to go and herd the sheep uh, mm -hmm. it's more cattle that would be suitable because mm -hmm. they are harder uh, when they work mm -hmm. uh, also obedience and mm -hmm. tracking um, like blood tracking, also special search. Uh, I'm doing a little um, special thing now. I just started with it to train one of uh, my dogs to find, uh, what do you say? Uh, the end, in the end, it will be he will search for narcotics. Uh, okay, well, awesome. Yeah, I hope, hopefully for some prisons here in Sweden, but I oh, don't wow. know. He has to pass a lot of tests. So. Right. I keep my fingers crossed and it takes about two years to get there. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but they love the agility. They are pretty much up to whatever you do. Mm -hmm. What you ask them to do, they do. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a cross country running or uh, have them in front of your bike, going on races, no problems. Uh, mm -hmm. They also like uh, the lurk coursing, like the side towns do, mm -hmm. to chase. Uh, they love to do it. So they they are an all round dog. You can do many things with them mm -hmm. also today. Mine, they are always outside uh, at my yard, and no one steps in here because they they tell me when people mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see quite different if it's a person they know or if it's a new person. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear the difference uh, at the bark. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no doubt they would protect me. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, since I had the dog Argentino, uh, I I'm not the person that thinks you should awake things that are there natural. Right. Uh, if you're not going to compete right. in it. Uh, and here in Sweden, you can only compete if you have uh, breeds like uh, German Shepherd and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We have uh, okay. very strict rules here for doing protection work. Okay. So, mm. But uh, I know there are some breeders in Uruguay that does it and mm -hmm. they do not compete in it and uh, they show a lot of skill. Um, I train mine just uh, when they are puppies used to learn to bite you know to mm -hmm. have the grab and bite and then get the prey mm -hmm. and run away and they do it really well so I think if you can do it yes uh, you can do it really good but then mm -hmm. go to competition not just for fun because it's right. uh, you need to know what you're doing absolutely so would you say that they'd be a good uh, catch dog for like hog hunting or anything like that uh Compared to the dog Argentino, I would say no. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. because uh, I think that they are they are tough. Yes, they are. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know they hunt with them in Uruguay. But uh, when I compare the breeds, since I had the dog Argentino, it's mm -hmm. uh, many different things. So I would say 
not my first choice for that. Not your, okay, right on. Um, so if somebody was going to get a, a Cimarron for uh, a pet purposes, how would they uh, interact with um, other house animals, like small um, dogs and cats, etc.? Small dogs, uh, no problem. Uh, they like them. Mm -hmm. Then there's always can there can always be complications. Uh, we know that because all dogs uh, or cats don't love each other. Mm -hmm. uh, my cat, he actually moved in here after uh, my my foundation uh, mm -hmm. female, and she hates cats. And he moved in after her. Uh, she didn't accept him, but. Uh, she didn't chase him either. Okay. She was just like, I'm here, go away. And the cat was running. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, you just need to introduce the animals in the right mm -hmm. way. And mm -hmm. for small dogs, uh, I have friends that have uh, chihuahuas and other small breeds. Never a problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, they, of course, they can play hard. You need to watch mm -hmm. them. So... Mm -hmm. They are not playing too hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I live on the countryside. Uh, mm -hmm. As I said, I have my 400 sheep as neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I also have some cattle here. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have uh, my little uh, farm. Um, so they go out. They are out most of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't like to be inside if it's not really bad weather here. Mm -hmm. They prefer to be outside and mm -hmm. they come and go in and out as they please. Um, I have a dog house where they can uh, be allowed to go in and out all day. And mm -hmm. when I'm home, they are also inside my house. Okay. And then my house is really full. <laughs> how, many, how many dogs do you have? Uh, I have six dogs at the moment. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, I have five Cimarrons, and mm -hmm. the number six is uh, my Saluki. So, and, and you also show the Saluki? Ah, uh, yeah, from time to time. Time uh, to time. She's just uh, my kennel dog. She's just my fun dog. Okay. And how? And the Cimarrons are good around her. Oh, uh, she thinks she is the Cimarron. She, she thinks grew up with the. Yeah, she grew up uh, with the dog Argentino and the Cimarron, oh, so actually okay. she's not a Saluki. Okay. Uh, she guards uh, even more than they are doing. So okay. she's the caller when someone comes, she runs, she gets uh, the rest of the pack and go and say, help me. <laughs> yeah. <I'm coming." laughs> so it's funny. Yeah, right. yeah, my morning routine is uh, I work night shifts. Yeah. So, Me too. Yeah. So actually, um, when I come home in the morning, <laughs> yeah, uh, I go out with them. We are outside. Uh, yeah. Depending on the weather, we can be by the house playing, or we go for a walk uh, around an hour. Uh, then we go and eat breakfast. Uh, then I go to sleep, and uh, they are actually in the dog house or outside, as mm -hmm. they wish. Mm -hmm. And when I wake up again, uh, several hours later, uh, we go training. I have one dog per day that I go training with. Okay. So one dog gets uh, good attention one day and then it's rest the next day. Okay. Sometimes I bring two dogs, but uh, it's also difficult if you really want to spend time with them alone when you have so many. I mm -hmm. prefer to give them uh, like one or two hours alone per week mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not just being in the pack. It's important for them. Right. So right. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much our morning routine. Mm -hmm. So our morning is two times a day here. Right. Right. And what's the purpose of, of your uh, training? What, what do you work on and, and what are you trying to instill? Uh, most time uh, we try to do something with the sheep uh, if they are still outside uh, mm -hmm. and now they are so I try to go there because it's uh, it's the best for them uh, to uh, burn out some energy and get to think mm -hmm. uh, otherwise uh, 
I have different, some I go trekking with and some I do go do obedience with or mm. some, uh, I do some gaming uh, brain activity inside mm -hmm. the house uh, to find, uh, find things or open things or get me the keys or stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they can be pretty useful. So that's the training basically we do. Mm -hmm. uh, my, all my dogs, mm -hmm. they are very free. Uh, I don't like to have too much commands on mm -hmm. them, uh, so they can pretty much do as they please, as mm -hmm. long as they are behaving nicely, mm -hmm. right. and not tearing my house upside down. Yeah. Have you had to deal with a lot of that? Uh, yeah, I had um, a surgery many years ago, and mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend that came to take the dogs out for walks. That was not enough. Um, somebody shooed my wall. Uh, I had some major renovation to do after that. Right. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So, do you compete with any kind of dog sport, or is it just pretty much the showing? Or it's the showing. Uh, we have here uh, since in Scandinavia, the breed is also uh, new. You can say to the to the dog world. Uh, I'm trying to get them to get approved in the herding, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not that simple here. It's a long way to go. And the nearest the herding competition, I think, is in Czech Republic. So mm -hmm. it's um, far to go. But mm -hmm. maybe one day we can, uh, we can go. Uh, I have a lot uh, to train because it's not the same type of... Uh, of herding like the border collies so i have to you know fit it in uh, the right uh, competition mm -hmm. for them right what kind of advice would you have for somebody who were was gonna um you know own a summer on what uh what are some of the things that they should uh, be prepared for and and uh what kind of things that uh, a cimarron needs that maybe other other breeds don't uh i would say say first uh always uh be very careful when you choose your breeder mm -hmm. uh, that goes for any breed uh you need to have a good contact with the breeder mm -hmm. uh, you need to see all the dog's health declarations and stuff like that mm -hmm. So you have no dysplasia on the hips. They should be free. Uh, you should also know the mentality of the parent's dog. Get some proof. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, when you got your Cimarron puppy, mm -hmm. uh, from the start, uh, train with it. Uh, go and see that it can relax. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell it now it's time to relax. And also, don't let it to push you around mm -hmm. they are really good to get what they want mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes it's hard to say no mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they really want to be in the center all the time so you have to mm -hmm. learn them to go and sleep in the wrong place uh, also socialization with the uh, other pets animals uh, yeah cats uh, children all the normal stuff i would say it's uh, mm. pretty much they need um something special uh, yeah you need to be prepared when they grow up they are very active uh, mm. and uh, when you have uh, several of them they can uh, really get you annoyed sometimes <laughs> <laughs> right they, they are always happy what i like with them they are always happy the tail is always wagging uh, okay. they are up for anything so if you're not happy if you're sad and you come home and they come directly to you wagging your tail like hey you're home let's yeah. go we do something. <laughs> yeah, right um, so it's it's hard to get angry on them but um I would say socialization, activation, it's very important. Mm -hmm. It's not just the dog that you take out for a 10 to 20 minutes walk. Mm -hmm. Then you have the wrong breed. It's definitely not an apartment dwelling dog, right? 
Ah, uh, yeah, I have puppy buyers that live in apartments. That, okay. Uh, they do great. Uh, they go out several times and they have the dog on daycare, mm -hmm. uh, which I think it's also good. Um, now I know all the countries have different rules, but here, mm -hmm. here we can't leave the dogs uh, more than six hours if we go to work. Okay. Uh, they need someone to watch over them. And mm -hmm. if it's a puppy or an old dog, they need uh, not six hours. You have to check up on them earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's good that you cannot just leave them a whole work day. Uh, then mm -hmm. you have to get daycare for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but they fit for an apartment. If you have an active life and if you like to uh, be out uh, walking, uh, hiking or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, mm -hmm. then the Cimarron suits really well. Mm -hmm. No, I breed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I had uh, some litters. Uh, people ask me why I don't have more litters, but uh, I breed for myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And I only breed if I think I have uh, animals that are good enough. Uh, therefore, for me, uh, the queue is very long to get a puppy. But I mm -hmm. believe I want to have uh, the best, what I think is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe I breed. It's not even once a year. It's uh, every second year or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I have, at the moment, I have Pancho, he's uh, imported, uh, mm -hmm. Vito, he's also from Uruguay, mm -hmm. and uh, then I also have uh, my newest, Albarino, mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, soon, ah, yeah, he's nine months old at the moment. Wow, wow. Yesterday or today, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I have uh, two grandchildren, uh, Pisuna and Sangre that um, is from uh, a litter from my puppy buyer. Uh, okay. So they are brother and sister. Yeah. Uh, one of my females, mm -hmm. my own bread, uh, she um, passed away uh, earlier this year, sadly. Oh. Mm -hmm. And also uh, her mother. So they left. Uh, so right now I don't have anything with my own kennel name at home. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. But uh, I can survive that. And one I sold because she could not live in the pack. She was a dog to live alone. Okay. Uh, and I, I think she has a great time now and better for her to not okay. be, to right. be alone. Mm -hmm. And you talked about hip dysplasia. Is there any other kind of issues that may arise with the, with the Cimarron? <laughs> Of course, every dog can have skin problems. Every dog can get allergies. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's so uncertain to say what this what this thing comes from. But uh, mm -hmm. I think if you just uh, have the dysplasia, you will be fine. Yeah. Um, that's what I've gone through when I checked in when I imported my dogs in Uruguay uh, of the parents and. I have not seen any hip dysplasia. I have, uh, well, now I'm thinking, I have one female uh, that had a mark on her hips. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think, you can get this anywhere, mm -hmm. in any breed, right. if you are unlucky. So I mm -hmm. think the environment is uh, fooling us uh, a little bit because... Um, the environment with the food and how you train your dog if you uh, always uh, let your dog walk on the leash when it's young uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's good I think they should run free uh, mm -hmm. because it's the best way for them uh, to exercise mm -hmm. so it's a lot of things but the uh, hip dysplasia of course and uh, I also do the heart scan uh, on my breeding animals because I like to know the hearts are okay, especially on the female. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, on the male as well, uh, because heart diseases you don't want to get uh, in the, into your breeding. So, mm -hmm. right, absolutely. What kind of diet do you uh, do you feed your dogs? Uh, you know, right now they eat dry food. Um, mm. 
and then they get some raw food on top of that three times a week and mm-hmm. they also get uh, raw bones mm-hmm. uh, around three times a week mm-hmm. and they are happy with that yeah. the steamer on with the food it's no problem they love every food you give them right it doesn't matter what it is can i eat it okay i will eat it so they're not picky no yeah no no, no. you can have um, if i put, i put a carrot cake uh, on my table mm-hmm. uh, it was gone in uh, like two seconds <laughs> i bet yeah All right. All right yeah and how are they with uh, the cold weather there in sweden yeah, no problem. They love it. Yeah. Uh, actually, Pancho's breeder, he was a little bit worried when <laughs> when they sent me Pancho. Mm-hmm. He was uh, thinking, oh, no, my God, the snow. But uh, no, they love it. Uh, yeah. and they have a thick undercoat. Uh, th- so they have an undercoat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, when it's a warmer climate, you don't see this undercoat as well as you do mm-hmm. here when mm-hmm. we really have the winter and the snow. Mm-hmm. Oh, but they, they have no problems with it. They love it. Uh, mm-hmm. When it gets, um, now we don't have the same uh, weather system, but when it gets over minus 25 here, mm-hmm. uh, I put uh, a coat on them when we go oh. out. And it, I can say we don't go out so long. It's cold. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's too cold for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what do they do? They spend a lot of time indoors in the winter. Do they? No, they, uh... they love to be out in the snow. Uh, they... I used to put a coat on them, and we they... go out. Uh, so no problem. Oh, that's, and that's... if we just go out uh, and play by the house, they don't have the coat. We go out and play for like uh, fifteen, twenty minutes, then we go inside because then it gets too cold. Mm-hmm. So they're a pretty yeah. hardy breed. Kind of yeah. probably probably not the same for the doggo, right? With the cold. Uh, no, I had one doggo. He liked to sleep. He slept outside in the snow, if he could. He loved mm-hmm. it. Okay. But he was one, so yeah. Um, it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But the Cimarrons, they are also um, in Uruguay. They lived in the mountains, and mm-hmm. in the mountains in Uruguay, also in the winter time, it can be very cold. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. It depends on the country. Uh, uh-huh. In Sweden, if they are born uh, 2007, uh, like Pancho, they can have cropped ears. Uh, born after 2008 here in Sweden, you are not allowed to be shown with cropped ears, but you can uh-huh. live here. Okay. But you cannot be on the dog show. Mm-hmm. Um, in Poland, uh, you can come uh, with craft ears if mm-hmm. uh, you have uh, done it in a country like Uruguay, when it's where it's still legal, mm-hmm. or US also where it's still legal. So it it depends. Mm-hmm. But most of the countries in Europe have closed for crop dogs entering shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's pretty hard to find. Uh, if you import a crop dog to Europe to find a show where to go. It's some still some countries. Mm-hmm. And what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I hated when uh, I bought my first doggo with ears. Uh, and my first Cimarron has cropped ears. I love the cropped ears. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it uh, it suits the breed. It's uh, it's really a special thing with the breed um, that makes them so special. With the ears, they look a little bit more like other breeds, uh, but still not. Mm-hmm. But um, I used to flip the ears back to get the right expression when they're mm-hmm. puppies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, I prefer the cropped. Mm-hmm. If I get the shoes. And what's what was the purpose for cropped ears? Uh, the purpose was uh, in the history uh, when uh, they uh, command a, a shooting of the wild cimarrons because there were a problem with them. I just have to turn away a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm getting cramped in my head. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's no problem. Uh, there was a shooting uh, because they were wild. So uh, 
they ordered to shoot the dogs and then they will get paid. Mm. Uh, but it was too heavy to carry a dog, so they actually took a piece of the air. Wow. So, so that's the history, what the history say. Then I don't actually know 100% mm. if this is true or not. But, uh, right. right. That's what the... You delivered the airs and you got paid. Wow. That's pretty harsh. Um, uh, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Has there been any breeds that uh, have interest you of late that you are thinking about owning, or are you pretty much uh, mm -hmm. on? No, I don't know. I'm not finished with the Cimarrons. Uh, uh -huh. They will always be by my side. And yeah. maybe one day it will come a dog again living here, just uh, to be here with me. Uh, I mm. need them. Uh -huh. um, the Alano interests me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Alano uh, is a little bit also similar to the Cimarrons. Right. Uh, in some ways. Um, and they also are a little look alike. So yeah. mm, it's interest mm. it's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I had an offer to have a Alano, uh, but uh, at that time uh, I just started with the Cimarron, mm -hmm. so it was it was not uh, you know introduced mm -hmm. one more breed. It's uh, it's hard. So, but maybe mm -hmm. one day. Uh, mm -hmm. I like them a lot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, what are what are your uh, what are your goals as far as with the Cimarrons? What are you uh, striving for? And oh. Um, my goals is, um, for the moment, uh, is um, used to uh, continue uh, showing showing them uh, to the world because they are a pretty new breed still. Uh, so more people get to know the breed. That's uh, still my goal, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, for my kennel. Uh, I don't know. I achieved so many things, uh, so mm -hmm. I don't know how I can uh, break my records anymore. It's mm -hmm. getting hard, actually. Uh, it's fun, but um, yeah, I I don't know what I could do. Uh, I have the special search uh, that I'm starting with one dog. We'll mm -hmm. see how that goes. Yeah, yeah actually, you have uh, Vito has the offspring that lives in Switzerland. That is yeah. a rescue dog. Okay. Uh, so he's trained to be a rescue dog. So that is also one mm. thing you can do here. We are, mm -hmm. I don't know uh, uh, what we have here, but in Switzerland mm. we have. And uh, for the for the search here, uh, mm. if you look at the customs or if you look at the, the prisons, uh, what do you use type of dogs? Mm. They are moving from the Malinois and the German Shepherds. Uh, mm. They use a lot of Spaniels. For sure. Mm -hmm. So I think they're getting pretty open uh, to use other breeds if mm -hmm. they see the potential of them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, uh, I agree. I agree with you one hundred percent. And the Simmons, they are actually, uh, if you sit and watch TV, they always come and they go mm -hmm. up in the couch, even if mm -hmm. they know they cannot, and they always go and lie next to you or by your feet. They mm -hmm. always want to be by your side. That's awesome. uh, sometimes that can be annoying uh, when you mm -hmm. have guests because some guests they don't say no they think it's so sweet that the dogs are all over them <laughs> but for the owner it's not so fun right. every time uh, right. but uh, I rather have social dogs than dogs that don't like people so yeah absolutely what are the uh, what are the standard sizes of the of the Cimarron and the weight and the height and all of that I would Just... say around around forty kilos. Mm -hmm. And now I mix the male and the females uh, because uh, for me they are all of my dogs are around forty kilos. Even okay. If they are male or female. Some of them can be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, fifty nine to sixty one centimeters in height. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm 170. That's pretty much normal height I have. They go to my uh, to my knees. It's mm -hmm. perfect, perfect size. Yeah. Perfect so size. Not too yeah. big, not too small. Mm -hmm. 
kind of similar size of the Belgian. Yeah. Uh, I would say the Belgian is a little bit higher, or they are higher. A little taller. Yeah, because the, legs. the cimarrons, you have uh, the four chest and the chest is pretty deep. Mm -hmm. So they look, they look pretty small, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't look so big. And they're, but they're pretty powerful. They can pack a punch uh, if they have to. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was run over today by two of them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, did, they didn't see me. Yeah. Hey. They were working huh? and they just. Wow. Uh, yeah, they were playing uh, and they came and uh, it hurt. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> so, uh, that's the, that's yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I think we covered uh, pretty much all of it. Uh, yeah. What I would say, I don't think it's a dog to own the first time you own a dog. Right. You need experience and. Mm -hmm. uh, or. If you're going to uh, own it the first time, you need to go to a great dog school. You need to really shape it up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because believe me, if you give me, if you give them one finger, they take the whole hand from you. All That's right. the similar, uh, and right. they can fool you pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So they're clever dogs. Right. Well, I completely appreciate your time. Yeah. So, yeah. And now none of my dogs has shown up here. Yeah. <laughs> the cat is, the cat is the still cat. up here. Yeah. Uh, She's guarding. But, uh, yeah, he, yeah. He's a pain in the ass. He's worse than the dogs. <laughs> uh, but anytime when it's daylight, uh, now we have uh, winter here in Sweden or we have autumn, but starting mm -hmm. to get winter. So we don't have so much uh, light mm -hmm. during the day. Uh, but when it is light, I gladly go on live with you again and have some yeah. of my dogs outside. Awesome, so that'd be great. So people can see how, how they are acting. Uh, and then they will get uh, a little bit more sense how they are. Uh, that would be... Normally, normally they jump towards the camera on my phone if I'm trying right. to film them because they want right. to be there. Right. So. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'll I'll stay in contact with you, and and that would be perfect. That'd be a good uh, good good show. So yeah, you have to go up early, though. Yeah. Hey, I'm working nights, as you know. I uh, yeah. I have a weird I have a weird sleep pattern, so I'm up at all hours, so I can I can accommodate. Yeah, so, it's the same here. Yeah, uh, that's great because you get this. I get to spend time with my dogs. Yeah. Yeah, and when it's quiet too, when there's not a lot of you know, yeah, stuff going around. Yeah, so all right. Well, I'll be in contact with you, and I really appreciate your time. And I had a good time, and and I learned a lot. So I hope. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yep. Yeah, hope to do it soon again. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. All Bye. Right. Bye.